So, first things first, Chaz is on the wrong screen. Hello everyone, welcome to another video here on Chaz Draycott Media. I know that a lot of you enjoyed the previous video on the very basics of iRacing Paints. So what we're going to move on to today is spec maps, which I know can be a sore subject for some, but hopefully I'll do a good job in simplifying them for you. But Chaz, what is a spec map, I hear you say? Well, a spec map is a file within iRacing's paints that controls the texture of certain parts of the car and the body and things that you can paint, basically. You'll see here on the bonnet of the wonderful Zansho Simsport Global MX-5 with the wonderful Silverstone Composites logo and Simply Race logos down the side that the middle blue parts here are glossy and you've got this matte black section on the bonnet really breaks it up and if you look down the side now if we just turn the car around you'll see that the blue is metallic and still shiny while all the matte black sections do not let off any reflections whatsoever and it's these little details that can really sort of add to a livery and make it a lot more believable you can see a wonderful little blue metallic effect here on the rear corners as well it's a great way to make your own livery stand out and of course give them that little bit more identity and a little bit of uniqueness about them now before we crack on, I do want to say I know that there is already a video on this from iRacing themselves. Drew Adamson and his team did a great job at really going in depth about how these spec maps work. But unfortunately boys, you really have overcomplicated your explanation on it because there's such a simpler way of doing it. And that's what we're going to be going over today. So first things first, you open up your PSD file of your livery. Now you'll notice on some of the updated templates on iRacing, they have this little folder up here which is custom spec map. I just want to say straight off the bat, this folder is in no way special. iRacing put this folder in just for you to have somewhere to create your spec maps. You can delete it, rename it, do what you want with it. There is nothing special about this folder. Targa files cannot read PSD layers. Simple as that. So the basics of how this works then. You've got three channels, RGB. We all know about RGB. And they have their own different properties. Blue is how glossy livery is going to be. You always want this to be 255. Never change that value to anything less. G is going to be how matte the car is. If you whack it all the way up to 255 though, you're going to end up with what I've seen described as a chalkboard car. They reflect no light at all and it looks absolutely awful. It doesn't look realistic at all either. I know that we're in a sim environment, but sometimes the fact you can take advantage of it being a sim doesn't mean that you should. So if you end up going above 150 on that, you're probably going to have a very strange looking livery indeed. Now R is how metallic that's going to be. So if you've got a car that's just 100% blue, no green in the middle, and full R, then it's going to be pretty much completely chrome. To show you the properties of all three, what we're going to do is break this up into three sections. So we're going to put a very glossy part, if I paint the right bit, on the front. Oh, also, I've just made a new livery here. So this is going to be the spec base. This is going to be the base layer of the car. So basically you build it up as if it's its own livery. So you'd have a spec for the base and then you'd have on top, you'd have logos, for example, and then you'd have other car parts as well, all of which will be readable. iRacing reads these files very well indeed. So what we're going to do, like I say, is just have these three sections on the car. We're going to add a little bit of matte into here, maybe just go to 100 on that, and you'll see here the difference between the two blues. One is a bit lighter than the other, and that signifies the texture. Eventually, you'll be able to see a file like this, and you'll be able to read exactly what it is based on what you're looking at. So we're then going to go 100% chrome on this, take out the matte value, and then boom, bright pink. Now you're thinking, but Chaz, my car's just going to be blue and pink. No iRacing reads these colours and applies textures to them based on how they look. So you'll still have your livery underneath, which of course is whatever the hell this was that we made. But we're going to save it now as car, and we're a TGA file again as well, car underscore spec, that's S-P-E-C, and then your iRacing ID. Now when you save this as a target file and you load the car into the sim, as it does in the viewer within the UI, it generates what's known as a MIP file. Now you cannot edit these. They do not have a visual value. They are just ones and zeros that tell iRacing for each pixel on that car, whether it's shiny, whether it's not shiny, whether it's metallic. And basically you get given this. So you'll see here, just down this line where my mouse is, there's a difference in how glossy 
the side of the car is. That's because the matte section's about here. And of course, at the back, you'll see the chrome section as well. Very shiny. And it affects whites as well and darkens them, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Now, if you create your spec map and have it in one folder, such as this section here, which I'm going to highlight yellow for the sake of this video, this is just the spec map. You can turn it on and off so you can see your livery and then you can see the values over the top of it as well. So you know exactly what you're painting and when, hopefully. Now, to show off the matte style, we're going to just paint the base of the car black. It's just going to be a solid black livery. We're going to do what we did last time in the previous video and just save that as car underscore 172698. We're going to keep the wireframe on it as well just so you can see it. And then as a separate file, we're then going to mess with the spec map. So we're going to change the base of the entire car to this matte section that we did in the middle. So it's 100 and, sorry, 255 <laughs> on the blue. Be good if I could read, wouldn't it? And then 100 in the green channel. So that gives us this wonderful matte color in the middle. Or so it should, because Chaz hasn't changed to it. There you go. See, I, I, I can do this. I promise you, I can do this. We're then going to save it. Car underscore spec underscore. And then your iRacing ID. Again, as a TGA, not a MIP. And that will make the whole car, when it loads. There you go. It's this wonderful matte black. You can see here, look on this rear corner. It's this very sort of realistic, nice satiny sort of shade. I will show you what happens when you turn the matte all the way up. And trust me, you don't really want to see this. But again, car spec, ID. And you'll see this what it can only be described as a monstrosity. You'll see, look, there is no light reflecting off it at all. You get a tiny bit of it down here on the side, but it just doesn't look good at all. And it really, it sort of ruins the fact that iRacing have such great reflections and graphical capabilities. So we're going to go back to the other sort of matte style and then I'm going to put some glossy bits over the top and show you really how much detail you can go into. So you'll see here that obviously we've got the BSR decals on here. We're not going to use them for the time being. We're going to go back to our car num file that we had and put these custom number boards on it as well while removing the wireframe. So we're going to save that as car num and then 172698. That's not so important for now. I'm just showing you how we're changing that from one livery to the next. Now these number boards that we've got here, as these three layers, are going to be their own spec map essentially. So what we're going to do is, we're going to select the three of them and the number plates as well, for good measure. And we're going to duplicate them. So these parts, this is the easiest way I've found to make your stickers have their own ID. Rather than trying to select the exact area around them, just duplicate them. Merge them all together and just name them. Just name it stickers spec just so you know what it is. Whack it into your spec map, turn that on, and then you can see, look, you've got your base, which is just the blue, but the number boards are still showing up as they are. Now, if I want to make just those parts glossy, again, you could just say, hmm, I'll select around it. Pain in the backside, you don't want to be doing that because then you'll have a section around that that is a different texture. So, we will stick on the, sp <laughs> we'll select the stickers, and then we're gonna click this button here, which only paints over the pixels in that layer. It's called Lock Transparent Pixels. We're going to then get our gloss, which is of course 255 on the blue, but zero on the green channel. And then we're just going to do this. That's as simple as it is. Honestly, that is it. You will save that as your spec map, car underscore spec, and then your ID. And this is where the magic starts to happen now, because what iRacing does is those certain sections will be glossy, the rest of the car will be matte. And if you've got them lined up properly, you'll see that you've got this wonderful matte side on the car, but you've still got, look, glossy stickers down the side of it as well. So if you add any sort of shapes or any logos to your car, you can control how reflective they are by each layer. You can do what you want with them. So if we turn it off, for example, go onto the base, we'll just add a new layer in, we'll just put gold bits. We'll call it gold bits for now. And I want to put a big shape like this down the side of our key. It's only rough for now. And what I'm going to do is, because I know that this is going to be metallic, I mentioned earlier that it darkens colours. Say I painted this, let's go white for now. We're not going to do the gold yet. We'll just do it white for now. A big white stripe up the side of it. But then I'm going to duplicate that layer. Because then this is the spec map counterpart, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. 
we're going to put that into the spec map turn that on and there it is again lock transparent pixels and we're going to make this completely chrome by doing it pink so as you can see full on the blue channel again 255 but also full on the red channel you can make things semi-metallic that just takes a bit of fine tuning to get right dependent on what you want but if we just paint that bit pink and you can see importantly the stickers have gone over the top of it make sure that you get the structure of these layers in the right order so that it plays up correctly because if you put them chrome over the top of it half of your number board is going to be chrome half of it's going to be glossy it's not going to look pretty so we're going to save it like this again car spec your id and then what we should have is this white stripe up the side i'll tell you what actually i've got this wrong and i'm going to show you how i've got this wrong because i've not saved delivery first you can see the stripe you can see how it works there's this wonderful chunk that's what looks glossy at the moment but is actually metallic up the side but don't forget you've got to save the livery as well so we turn the spec map off resave the livery there you go now it should work there you go don't forget that's painted white in photoshop so you can see how much making it metallic darkens the color of it still looks great though but then you can apply colors to that don't forget so you've got this section here that we've named gold bits i'm going to just put say a little tint of yellow on it we're going to go for about that sort of color and just paint that up there like that again we don't need to save the spec map again because it's still applying metallic effects to that part we're just changing the color of it in the livery you just need to get your head around working in both files that's one of the more difficult bits to do make sure you edit the livery all the way to the end and then you apply the spec map but if you want to do fine tuning like this along the way there's nothing wrong with that but it's probably just a bit easier that you do it the other way now what Chaz has done here is he's been a complete moron and saved that file you would have noticed it as the spec map and you can see if you do it wrong it makes a bit of a mess so we need to make sure that we get this right again shall we car underscore num for the livery and then for the spec map car underscore spec can you tell i've been typing that a lot and there you go wonderful gold strip up the side of it bit garish for some but if you want chrome on your livery which i know a lot of you do then that is the best way to achieve it but the thing i'm trying to get at here is you don't have to go into all these blending options and remove rgb channels and get this monochrome effect that you then convert into what this is you simply just need to paint it i mean if for example the gold bits layer here that i've got if i wanted to just do as i did on a livery that tom and brooks uh, tom and tom and brooks that tom brooks and i raced we literally just did this on it we just did a jagged pattern across it and then we applied a chrome spec map to it like this just a big pink jagged effect and it looked awful i won't lie it, it looked pretty awful but people seem to enjoy it so we did it it was for charity now what i'm going to do just to show this off a little bit more is obviously turn the spec map off for now and we're just going to paint the car blue just going to do it solid blue so you can see this certain section we'll keep the gold stripe on it for now why not and you'll see just how quickly it can work I didn't need to do any blending options or any messing about with channels as long as you know what the RGB channels do when you're choosing your colour it'll work but there you go there's your jagged sort of chrome pattern over the top and then a matte base blue car and that's all there is to it really spec maps are a lot easier than people make out and unfortunately the people that made them out to be the most complicated were eye racing but hats off to them and they're very very complex video but hopefully that's explained things well enough. Um, if there are any questions, obviously pop them down in the comments below. I'll be making a couple more videos on some of the niche parts of iRacing painting. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you soon.